In this episode of Brushify Bootcamp, we're going to be going over how you can create roads in Unreal Engine 5. To do this, we're going to be using the Brushify Natural Roads Pack, but these techniques will also work with the Brushify Country Roads Pack as well. Roads are a fantastic way to add detail to your level and guide your player towards an end goal. So grab yourself a cup of tea, fire up Unreal Engine 5, and let's get started. This is the Brushify Natural Roads example level. You can skip between different bookmarks in the level by hitting the number keys on your keyboard. So one, that's two, three, four, five, and so on. This just lets you have a little bit of a preview of all the different angles on this level, see how all of the splines are set up and how all the objects look and how they work. Now I'm going to show you how you can create your own road spline. I'm going to add a road spline right here next to our already created example roads. So the first thing is to go up to selection mode in the top left, click on landscape, then go to manage and then splines. Make sure you have landscape one selected as that's the landscape in the center right here. For this next part, you're going to want to make sure helpers are enabled. So you can see all of these green lines here. Hit G on the keyboard to enable and disable helpers. Now I'm going to hold down control and click on the landscape. And then I'm going to click again. And then I'm going to click again. And you can see that what this is doing is actually creating a spline. Now the size of the spline is way too big at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all these spline points at once by clicking select all connected control points. And then we're going to go to the half width and change that to 120. And we're going to change the side fall off to 100. And that's going to make our spline, as you can see, a little bit thinner. Now, all of these sort of spline points, you can actually click on those. And then you can actually translate and rotate those by hitting W or E on the keyboard. So W is for translate, E is for rotate. And these are just manipulated then like any other objects in Unreal. One very handy thing that you can do as well is, of course, holding down Alt and then dragging out. And that will actually create a new uh, spline point. So if you want to just make the road a little bit longer, hold down Alt and then drag this out while translating it. So now this is looking pretty good. The only issues are, of course, that there's no mesh or material on this. And also, we're actually clipping through some parts of the landscape. What we want to do is we want to make the landscape actually conform to the spline. So in order to do that, we're going to click on the spline and we're going to go to select or connected segments. And once we've got that entire spline selected, we're going to go to deform landscape to splines right here in the landscape panel. And we're going to click on only selected. As you can see, that's done a pretty decent job of sort of clipping uh, the landscape into the spline. So it's basically made the landscape deform to that spline. There are some rough edges here and there where it's not quite worked perfectly. However, you can always go into the sculpting tool with the landscape, you know, and sort out some of those issues manually with the sculpting tool. So the next step is going to be to add the mesh and material to this landscape. And to do that, we're again going to go click on the landscape spline click on segments, scroll down on the details panel, and we're going to go on to where it says landscape spline meshes and make sure we go to spline meshes. Uh, this can be a bit of a confusing thing because if you would accidentally go onto the control points, there is also another mesh input here on control points. So we don't want to put it in here. We want to make sure we go to segments and then go to landscape spline meshes. We're going to hit, click add element to add a new element. And then in the mesh panel here, we're going to go to our road mesh. And it should be in Brushify content, Brushify meshes roads. And then in the meshes folder, you should be able to find the S underscore road plane. 
and we're just going to add that onto our mesh slot. So now you can see we've actually got a sort of real mesh that's uh, being added to the road spline. And we're going to give that a material. So click on material overrides, hit the, add the little plus, and we're going to go to the content browser again. This time we're going to go to roads, brushify meshes, roads, materials. I think I'll choose uh, pebbles material, pretty good example. And then just uh, click on that and we can add it to our material override right there. And there we have it. Now we have an actual road that has got some uh, detail. Now, one thing you'll notice is that as I get close to the road, um, there's a sort of visual artifacting that happens when we get really close. And that's because there's actually shadows being applied to this uh, road mesh. And we don't really want to have shadows on the road itself. So I'm gonna click the road again, choose segments, and then I'm gonna untick cast shadow. And there you can see now it's sort of rendering a little bit more correctly. So make sure you disable cast shadow on your roads uh, for everything to render properly. All right, it's pretty good. Now there's one thing that you might have noticed, which is that the grass is still growing on our road. It'd be really good if we could clean this up. And obviously with Brushify, it would be you know pretty simple to go into the remove procedural paint layer and then you know go in and sort of you know start uh, manually removing the grass there. Uh, so if I paint down remove procedural, you can see it's starting to clear a path. However, that is quite a lot of manual labor work and maybe you don't want to go over every single road sort of manually painting out the grass. Um, what you can do is if you go to the uh, spline again, select it again, select all connected segments. You can actually go into the details panel and you can see where it says landscape deformation. There is a layer name right here that you can add. So we're gonna type in remove procedural. And then we're gonna untick raise and lower the terrain because we don't want to do that. And then we just wanna click Let's find a place with loads of grass so we can really see the difference. Uh, we can then click deform landscape to splines again and click only selected. And there, that's now added a bit more of the, it's added the remove procedural paint layer to the landscape underneath that. There are still some stragglers. I think to fix that, we could probably go to the control points and increase maybe the side fall off a little bit. Um, that might increase the amount of the paint layer that's being painted down. Then back to segments and let's go deform landscape to spines. And there we have it. Most of the grass has now been automatically removed uh, from the road. So the tools for all of this do exist. They're just a little bit of an extra step that's required to type remove procedural into that layer name and then deform landscape to spines. Now this road is sort of placed correctly, but it's not really very well integrated into the landscape in most parts of it. So there are some areas where it does work, like this one right here sort of blends quite well, uh, but there are others where it's, you know, kind of floating off the landscape a bit. Um, so one thing I could do to sort of mitigate that is to, again, go to segments and then we could put raise and lower terrain on and then click it in, into place again. That does help to sort of fix the, the issue right there. So it's really just a case of making sure that the road is nicely planted on the landscape. Make sure your side fall off setting is sort of set high enough um, that the, the road actually deforms um, more accurately. I'm going to now go over some of the shader features that allow this blend to take place and show you how those actually work. So if we click on our landscape spline, uh, we can actually see that there's the material assigned to this. I'm just going to open up that material in the material editor and we're going to see exactly what's going on inside. So one of the main features is the object blending. 
And this is what basically allows us to have this fade between the landscape spline and the landscape itself. So if I untick object blending, you can see sort of what's happening there. Um, if we would clip so straight through the landscape, uh, maybe I'll make a really harsh example to really show you guys how bad it would be. Um, I'll make an extra bit of road there to really clip it. So if I really clip through, you can see that there is basically a completely horrible, harsh looking line. Enabling object blending allows us to create this nice gradient right here. And this is automatically ticked by default in all of the Brushify uh, road materials. So you don't really need to worry about that being turned on. Um, that'll turn itself on automatically and you'll get that nice blend. Uh, another feature, of course, is if we disable object blending, you'll see that there's actually some sort of dithering on the side of the road automatically, which you know, sort of breaks up the side of the road. And that's done with an opacity map. So if we disable the opacity map and we just switch that to say a plain white texture, you can see that that's how it would look without that dithering applied. So dithering def definitely adds a lot. And then on top of that, you've got the object blending for when it sort of clips into the landscape as well. And those are two really important features that help you sort of integrate and blend uh, the landscape with the uh, with the road. I'm just going to undo this um, change I made here with the uh, the one I clipped into the floor because that's making this all sort of hover. So let's undo that. And really, your job as a level designer is basically just to try to get the road to connect or, or get as close as possible to the actual landscape because that will create the sort of cleanest uh, transition. So as flat as the landscape can be and as close as you can get the uh, the road spline to it, um, that will create a more convincing blend. Another thing you might have noticed is the actual visuals and how bumpy the road actually looks. This is actually done using parallax occlusion mapping. So if we go down to where it says parallax occlusion mapping and we actually change this height ratio to zero, you can see that's how the road would look without it. As you can see, it looks really flat and boring, but if we add it back on again, you can now see there's a, there's a bit of control there in the shader for how much bump um, we have. I'll leave it to something like 0 0.035 because I think that's a bit more realistic. So now you have the basic understanding of how these splines work. You can now go into the example level and just have a play with seeing how the various splines are set up. Try moving around the control points, uh, playing around with, you know, just seeing how they're all integrated nicely with the landscape and with the terrain. Um, when you have more complex terrain like this, where splines are going up and down, you do need to be a little bit more careful with how they are placed on the landscape. You know, you can go in and sort of rotate them slightly to make sure that they uh, sort of fade and feather properly. Um, but this is really down to the skill of the level designer, um, the level artist, um, to make sure that they place these in a really intelligent way and, um, you know, make sure there aren't any bugs or, or artistic problems or glitches. Because, of course, you know, if you rotate them like this, you can uh, have something that doesn't look so great. I really hope you find these tools useful for placing landscape splines in Unreal Engine 5. Hopefully in the future, there will be even easier ways to place landscape splines. But for now, these little workarounds and this sort of technology with the shaders is definitely something that makes life a lot easier. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.